Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go for another approach to valuation. This time, we're going to focus on cash flow instead of dividends. First, let's take a quick review of how do we measure cash flows. Remember in an earlier chapter, when we look at cash flows, we separate it into operating versus financial. Um, and the reason for that is because we want to look at the main operation of the firm. And this is particularly important when we are doing valuation. Uh, there are various starting point that we can choose to begin our estimation for free cash flow. The most obvious one is the uh, statement of financial uh, statement of cash flows, where we'll take cash flow from operations as our starting point. Um, we can also start with net income, EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax depreciation, and amortization, or NOPAD, net operating profit after tax. Note that NOPAT um, is not the same as net income because this is operating profit after tax, not net income, which is um, has um, financing uh, aspect included in it. So uh, again, going back to our focus is we want to focus on operating. Another factor to take into account is when we measure free cash flows, we would need to decide from whose perspective. If we are measuring free cash flow from the common equity holders perspective, uh, that will be free cash flow to common equity. But it may also make sense to measure free cash flows to the firm as a whole. To the firm as a whole means that to all the creditors as well as equity holders. So cash flow to the firm, we include cash flows to liability holders, lease holders, preferred stock holders, and common stock holders. I will use um, cash flow to the firm uh, as, a, as a term because it uh, really f um, focuses on the idea that it's, it's the cash flow to all the firm's stakeholders. Okay, so first let's take a look at how would we compute free cash flow to the firm. And we're going to start with cash flow from operations. So we're going to, uh, based on operating activities, we have cash flow from operation. We want to um, add back uh, after tax interest expense because that's not part of, um, uh, because we want to measure cash flow to um, all the stakeholders, so it's the firm. So this includes uh, liability holders as well. And then also um, include any uh, changes required for liquidity. So this is typically an in uh, change, also either increase or decrease uh, in um, cash and cash equivalent holding. And that gives us free cash flow from operations. And subtract from that is net capital expenditures. Uh, this is very important. So what this means is we generated cash flow from our operation. We'll have to reinvest some of that in order for the firm to continue to grow at the rate that it, it, that uh, management wanted. Um, it is only after we take into account, so subtract net capital expenditures, that we have free cash flow for the firm. So from operations and then subtract any investing, uh, then we get free cash flow to the firm. To illustrate this, let's take a look at an example. Uh, the company we're gonna take a look at is 3M. Uh, I encourage you to pause the video now, do two things, um, either print out or write down the steps for computing free cash flows and also download the um, Excel template. Are we ready? Let's go ahead. So the first thing we're gonna do is compute free cash flow for all debt and equity stakeholders. So remember this is the same as to the firm. So that's everybody. The first thing we want to put in is cash flows from operating activities. And we get that from the statement of cash flow. So we already have that. So all we have to do is just refer to it. Just use an equal sign so we don't have to type anything. We just copy the first year. And then we need to add back. So once again, I encourage you to have that written, that, um, the summary written down, we have to um, 
subtract. Uh, we have to add back. So interest pay after taxes. So we have um, interest expense. We we're given that. So after tax will be times one minus the tax rate. Uh, next is to um, account for change in cash for um, liquidity. So in here, an increase will be an outflow, and then a decrease will be an inflow um, in cash required for liquidity. So that will be the opposite of the change right so if it is so is if a increase it will be negative if it's a decrease it will be positive so because this is opposite of what we have computed we need to put a negative sign in front of it so we will actually what that means is we're gonna use uh, um, we actually have 99 dollars from our operating activities that we can use toward cash balance for liquidity so now then we have three operating cash flows for all debt and equity stakeholders So that will be the sum of these three. So from the operating activity, we add back the interest. We also um, add back any decrease in cash. So we have our cash flow, uh, free operating cash flow for all stakeholders. And from that, we have to subtract. Remember, we have to subtract um, any investing activities. So investing activities include fixed assets that we have purchased. Um, we any business that we have purchased and also other investing activities so we have this from our investing activity so we since we already have this in our statement of cash flow, all we have to do is just to include them. Um, what we want to do is to emphasize the, uh, where our investing activity goes. So whether or not it, uh, fixed assets means expanding the current um, facilities, acquisition of business is another way for expansion, and then we lump everything else into other investing activity. So, so to, since we just use the equal sign to reference um, what we already have, uh, the same for acquisition of business. And then we'll add up all the other kind of um, investing. So we will put um, other investments and other investing activity all into um, one, one line. And the total of this will be cash flows from investing activities. And then the difference between the two will be free cash flows for all debt and equity stakeholders. So once again, I uh, want to emphasize that's the same as the cash flow to the firm. So that's equal to the free cash flow from operating activities plus cash flow from investing activities. And typically we expect that to be um, negative because the company is growing. So let's... It's also useful to include the years, so we are clear what we, what year we are computing. Once you have entered the formula, you can copy it down to, uh, over to uh, the other years. As you can see, cash flow from uh, for stakeholders actually decrease, um, and the main reason driving the decrease is because we are expanding, we are acquiring businesses. In fact, we acquire a relatively large um, amount um, of cash was used to acquire business. Next, let's take a look at how do we compute free cash flows to common equity holders. Once again, we're going to start with cash flow from operations. 
So we start with cash flow from operations. Uh, we don't have to add back any interest because this is just to come an equity. So we do want interest to be excluded. Uh, we will, um, but we will take into account changes in cash balances required for liquidity. That will give us cash flow from operation for equity. Uh, investing activity is the same, so there's nothing new there. Uh, financing activity is different. Um, we'll have to take into account changes in um, the overall uh, borrowing level, um, as well as cash flows that's associated with financial assets, uh, cash flow associated with preferred stock, and cash flow for non-controlling interest. So make sure you take a moment to either print this out or write this down, and then we're going to return to our example um, with 3M. Back to our template, we finished the cash flow for the entire firm. Now we're going to continue with our example. We're going to use this to help us compute cash flow for common equity shareholders. Um, so remember the first it, the first item is cash flow from operating activities. So that did not change. Um, and then we also have increase or decrease in cash required for liquidity. So those two are the same and we we can be lazy, or we can take the opportunity to double check our calculations. So cash flow from operations, that's relatively straightforward. Um, increase and in, decrease in cash activity. Once again, um, cash flow liquidity, we need to put a ne negative sign because um, it is opposite to um, the net increase. So in, in here, an increase is an inflow, decreases an outflow, but in here, an increase is an inflow. We are returning it back to operating cash flow. Uh, and then we have um, cash flow from investing activity. We, I'm going to take a shortcut here. Uh, because this is the same cash flow from investing activity. We already did this calculation once. So I'm just going to pick it up here instead of um, redoing the entire calculation. And then we need to take into account changes. So if we have an increase um, in borrowing, that will be an inflow, a decrease in borrowing. We're paying off our liability, so that will be an outflow. So first, we're going to take a look at short-term borrowing. So um, notice that this is the same sign as in our statement of cash flow. So we can just um, we can just use that. So increase in short-term liability. Um, the same thing for increase and decrease in long-term. So we have, we do have an increase of 24.48. And then we have, after we take into account, we don't, in this particular case, we don't have non-controlling uh, non interest, non-preferred stock. So we now have free cash flow to common equity shareholders. And we can copy this once again to the other two years. For equity shareholders, we can also take a look at, so where did this money go? We should have $7,000 uh, $7, for share uh, for equity holders. So let's take a look at the use of this free cash flow and see if um, they, are being, they can be accounted for, and they should be. So first, we can take a look at dividend. So how much did we pay out in dividend? We pay, um, we can put that as a positive number just so that we can see it. So dividend, we pay 25.61. Um, and we know that another way we can um, give money back to shareholders is through share repurchase. So let's take a look at how much share repurchase 
happen. So if um, common stock decrease, that means that is a share repurchase. So again, that's an opposite sign of what we have. Um, so we repurchase 44, 49 shares. And that will give us the total. So this will be free cash flows to common equity shareholders. And of course, they are the same. So we have, um, we have, make sure my label makes sense we have seven thousand and ten dollars as free cash flow available to be used and we see that the cash flow to common equity holders is the same as seven thousand and ten dollars we use that money to pay dividend and we use that money to uh, repurchase stock we can copy this over and of course uh, hopefully uh, they are balances so they are the same We'll end this video here um, because this is a good stopping point. In the next video, we're going to look at how do we compute free cash flow using the other starting points uh, besides the statement of cash flow. See you soon.